Hi, it's Ian Tomlin here. Um, again, another uh, uh, session this afternoon. I'm with VJ Agavel. Hello, VJ. Hi, Ian. Good morning to you. Looking forward to finding out a bit about uh, Dextra Labs and, and what you're doing. It says on your it says on your website, you know, and if you know, it says Dextra Labs is a leading provider of digital transformation services and custom AI development solutions that enables yeah. businesses with strategic technology leadership to unlock ten times potential. So that's, that's right. That, that's pretty straightforward. Tell me, tell me, what does that mean in practice? What does that mean in practice that you're about? See, when we started the business, we were trying to focus on something that meant of importance to our customers. So, um, you know, we decided to start building IPs and focusing on building IP for our customers. And when we look at today's uh, technology landscape, it meant that, you know, uh, there has to be a component of AI to every piece of IP that we yeah. build out. And uh, which yeah. is why we focused heavily on ensuring that, you know, everything that we deliver as a component of AI, yeah. you know, what we saw was as part of the engagement, we would bring out a value to the core problem statement yeah. that the customer highlights. And then we write down all the allied business problem statements that they want to solve. So when we are building out the solution, yeah. the solution actually tries to address greater amount of value than it was originally perceived. And that's how we deliver 10x value to the customer. And tell me, how did Dextra Labs begin? What was the origin of this business? When we were building out Dextra Labs, uh, we really were brainstorming on what we want to focus on. And like I said earlier, uh, we wanted to focus on building IP. Then the next question was, whom are we building this for? Um, and we believe that IP was, you know, is important to every business. So building IP needs a very unique culture and a delivery ecosystem that we wanted to set up at Dextra Labs. And we did that by combining, you know, our 20 years of experience in delivering technology and IP for customers of various sizes, uh, industries and geographies. So that's how, you know, Dextra Labs began. So to tell me, Vijay, what, what does a good customer look like for you? Um, Someone who is wanting to experiment, who is wanting to do some uh, R&D or set up a center of excellence, uh, who has the appetite for uh, iterations. These are the type of customers uh, that we generally have engaged. And what sort of breadth of problem are you solving? I mean, obviously, technology is being used for practically every industry, every piece of every process right now. So how do you pick which bits to, to focus on? So when we listen to the customer's problem and uh, we try to identify if the customer is actually sounding off a problem or are they really discussing a solution. These days, you know, with all the information, customers start talking solution. And the moment we hear that they are talking solution, we think that it is something that already exists that they have seen and which is not really an IP for them. Yeah. So when we are talking to customers, right. if we see real problem statements coming out, we know that there is a problem which is not being solved by an existing product out of the box. And that's where we see a fitment to build out an IP and tailor something which solves the customer's problem. So that's how, you know, we identify the problem statements to work on. Yeah. So I guess the idea of co-ideation, working with customers that are just walking around their problems or co-creation is, is very much in your wheelhouse as a business, is it? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that is the only piece you know, that we focus on in this business. It's co-creation of ideas and aligning it to, you know, the customer's business problem statements that they are trying to solve. You know, eventually something which either creates a new business vertical for the customer or enhances yeah. their pocket share within existing business verticals or something that is, you know, uh, experimental for the customer to understand yeah. their end consumer behavior. So all this experimentation is and co-creation is part of our are in house expertise. Yeah. Listen, I'm going, to, I'm going to put three things to you around this. They're all very related, I guess. The first thing is that when I talk to customers very often about the problems or business leaders and department leaders about the challenges they're trying to solve with technology, I, I get kind of three different situations arising, I think, very often. One is one is they they haven't really qualified to an extent that somebody could build something. What it is that they're trying to to do. Uh, I, I guess the second thing is a lot of people will say, well, when I see it, I'll know it's right. But until I see it, I won't know it if it's what I want. And I guess the third one is, um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do this. And then when you dig under the surface, they, they simply haven't got the data. They've not captured the data. They've not started the journey of capturing the data. Does any of that sound familiar to you? It is. A lot of customers, you know, when they are trying to build something new, they have still 
you know, not discovered what is their true motivation and what is the true business problem statement that is driving them to, you know, get on to this journey. Because to be honest, this journey is of the unknown and yeah. you cannot have a uh, highest amount of clarity when you are starting out. You have to build that leap of faith and say, hey, I want to solve this problem, whatever it is, right? Now, when yeah. you're that motivated to solve a problem, it doesn't matter what you can see right now. What matters yeah. is, are you able to see a, a better state in a month or two? So hence, yeah. what we do with our customers is we try to keep our milestones very short. That gives them a visibility on how we have progressed month over month. And we yeah. have the capacity to iterate. So there is a very famous uh, saying um, from Steve Jobs when he says, you know, the final product that you get out after months of effort is actually quite different than the original idea. Yeah. Because during the process, you know, you keep churning out and massaging the idea so much that the mm. end solution and the product looks very different. And that's how it should be. You cannot have the final visibility on day one. So yeah. to be honest, when we are you know, working with such customers, we try to help them build that uh, leap of faith so that they can go ahead and invest on an initiative that matters to them the most. Right. So let me let me read this back a bit, if I may. So your business model is really about identifying individuals, roles, organizations that have got an intent to, to build genuine IP. Um, and you're acting in a collaborative way as a route to achieving that outcome. I want to call it a development partner because that's, that's too crude. But but you're working yeah. with them to collegiately achieve that outcome. How do you how do you help them to to get those crit what are the critical success factors to make it work and how do you how do you mitigate the risks attached to the project? See, like I uh, you know mentioned earlier, one of the key things before we start is to be able to identify the key business problem statements and the high-level mm -hmm. business objectives that you want to solve. So once we note those down all of our team members are only monitoring if the business objective is being met or not and right. what is the business objective we are targeting for this milestone and that keeps us on the track and to mitigate any deviations and risks what we do is to build smaller milestones and the milestones are typically in three or four weeks this ensures that yeah. the risks are being discussed more frequently mitigated more frequently and everyone is focused on uh, the clear business objective laid down so you know, typically we conduct daily standups, we conduct uh, bi-weekly demos with everyone in the group. We conduct backlog scrubbing sessions, including uh, the members from customers group. So they, they collaborate and you know, they, uh, they build out on, on the specs that we want to build in the next milestone. So that's how yeah. we ensure that there is 100% clarity, transparency on the progress, on the you know, milestone and the business objective that is being targeted. By the way, when we are doing this right, we are also very open to taking customer feedback and pivot because right. what we have seen is to achieve the end goal, we have to be able to adapt to something recent that has happened. For example, when we were, you know, uh, in the journey of building out a product and chat GPT was announced, we suddenly had to pivot and incorporate uh, parts of that uh, within our own uh, roadmap, which wasn't there. Right. So we have to, that's how we, you know, uh, incorporate. Uh, in every milestone and we aim towards the business object. So really, I guess a, a key, one way of looking at this is to think about your business as part of a fusion team that's doing a kind of a agile development process for a client where they're part of that team essentially, but, but you're essentially outsourcing the whole deliverable unit of that. Is that, is that right? Absolutely. So when we form this group, customers take uh, customer uh, team members, they take the, you know, uh, stage where they are the subject matter experts, the domain experts, and mm -hmm. they can clearly spec out you know, the problem statements. And then when we come in, we bring in all the expertise of program management to delivery practices, to technology, to quality assurance, to you know, taking it to production and go to market, right? So when we bring okay. these skills together in one group, then we have the side where, you know, customers help us identify problem statements and potential solutions. Uh, and we help them build out the whole solution with the help of tech uh, right. during the full course of engagement. So what is the technology that you're using and that you are adept at using to, to do this VJ? So I guess, I guess that's going to be a really important aspect of this for, for the clients themselves, isn't it? To know that what you're leaving yeah. behind is robust and it's integratable. And how does that bit work? Well, if you asked this question to me uh, 10 years ago, 
I would have a very straight answer. But I, I can tell you this, uh, I have seen that in the past 15 years, the choices of technology have changed drastically. The fundamentals of programming are still the same, but the number of languages, frameworks, tech stacks, SaaS solutions, the number of buy that you can do now is humongous. So uh, what we have ensured as part of our uh, life cycle is uh, we don't rely on any one technology. We want to discuss this out with the customer to see what their preference is, how much are they willing to use, uh, which is readily available as an buy option, and how much would they want us to build grounds up, and then uh, what are they more comfortable with in terms of the tech choice. Right. So right. what we did is we created T-shaped engineers in our team. Yeah. And uh, what that means is they understand one tech in deep, they understand the fundamentals in deep, but they are able to, you know, switch from one tech stack to the other with minimal friction and that ensures that we are using a tech stack that the customer is more comfortable with from a long run perspective generally we recommend our customers to use something uh, which is uh, non beta and uh, has enterprise grade you know, support and uh, and sustainability and has a lot of high availability of people uh, to keep their maintenance costs down Got it, got it. And when it comes to the maintenance of the the solutions that you have put together, VJ, do you do you maintain those platforms into the future <coughs> as well, or do you just basically build it and, and give it to them and train them and say, right, it's it's on you? How does that work? Well, what we have seen is uh, customers once they build trust, they would want you to take the ownership through and through and stay yeah. beyond the dev journey as well. And typically in a journey of building IP, you never get into maintenance. You are actually always building iterations and versions and new features uh, that you would want to deliver to your customer. Yeah. So we kept our model very simple. We said, Got hey, uh, we can do the build, operate and transfer. Yeah. We are happy to do the build and operate perpetually. But the day that you would want us to transfer, we are you know, happy to uh, transfer that back to your internal teams or to anyone of your choice. In terms of your thoughts around co-ideation and co-creation, obviously, you know, if organizations do start to have earlier conversations with you about the ideas that they've got for IP, that, that's got to be good for them and, and good for you because obviously they're getting your ideas as well. But um, are you seeing that happen in the marketplace more? Do you think it should? What is your view on the opportunity for co-creation for companies? Well, yeah, I think uh, that's a very interesting question, Ian. Uh, so I would absolutely agree with the you know need and idea for co-creation and we have now started seeing maturity coming in from customers as well that want to do co-creation and want to engage a partner of choice from the very beginning and i think the days of creating clear project specs or a large rfp and then handing it over to someone is clearly gone unless it's a you know bau or a large maintenance project for innovation you have to co-create and the world is moving so fast that you can't rely on specs that were built six months ago. Like I just gave you an example, GPD yeah. shows up and your plans go for a toss. So hence, I think you know, if any project which is driven by technology claims to have a roadmap of six to 12 months, then I would think that it is already legacy. Yes. So it's very important yeah. that you know, we work together in the co-creation journey. And I'm seeing that customers are more open now uh, to that idea. Well, that's great. Well, for, for everybody on the channel that's, that's reading into this, um, VJ is going to be at Generation Digital event on the 24th of October this year. So if you've, if you've not got your ticket, make sure that you book it and you'll be able to speak to VJ uh, and his colleagues at the event. Uh, so VJ, looking forward to that. Thanks very much for your time today. And uh, if people, just one last question, if people are thinking about a project that, that they think requires IP, could you just frame that a bit more for me? So what does that look like? What, what could be a sort of project that you could be doing for them, just on some of the examples you've done before? Okay. So actually, um, I'll take an example of uh, a pharma customer who you know wanted to essentially bring up diagnostic devices for asthma care. And they wanted to give a seamless connectivity between their patients and doctors and be able to you know publish uh, reports uh, for guidance and also to drive adherence. So this required multiple levels of research, not just in software, but also hardware. So when the idea originally came up, we collaborated with them over more than four years to get going with their hardware teams, their R&D and clinical teams, and then creating a software that is able to interact with all that algorithm and all that hardware that they have created. So that yes. the journeys have spanned out over uh, four years in most of the cases.
Yeah. And VJ, again, if people want to contact you directly as well, I think it's uh, dextralabs.com. Is that right? Yes. Yes. That's great. Well, listen, VJ, thanks for your time today. And I'm sure we'll be talking again on the 24th. It was a pleasure uh, to be here, uh, Ian. And uh, thank you once again for having me on the channel. I look forward to seeing you on the 24th.